Hey everybody, and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I am on that path to 100,000 subscribers, and I'm so close, and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family. And make sure to hit that bell icon, because that will let you know when I post a new video. I'm super excited for today's video. We are going to be using mica powder and UV resin to make acrylic keychains. This is a really fun way that you can add color to your keychains without using glitter. And it's so fun. I have this box of 60 colors provided to me by Arteza, and they also sent me some really beautiful holographic vinyl to use. And this is their reds pack, and I absolutely am obsessed with these colors. They're so pretty and so color shift. You guys are gonna love these. And they are being so sweet and so kind, and they're going to do a giveaway for you guys. The giveaway is going to include a 35 pack of mica powders, as well as a pack of the Red Tones holographic vinyl. There will be directions on how to enter this at the end of the video. This is going to be good for U.S. residents and residents in the U.K. as well. All details will be listed down in the description. So be sure to check those out, as well as links for everything that you need to create this project. You're going to need a couple of things, so I'm just going to list those for you really quick. That way you guys can be prepared. What you're going to need is some UV resin, a pair of scissors. I always keep baby wipes handy when I'm working with UV resin. It's a really easy way to clean up any spills or mishaps, plus it cleans up the mica powder super easy. You're gonna need some mica powder. This stuff is absolutely stunning. One of my favorites that I found and I'm so pleased with the colors. You'll need some silicone brushes and stir sticks. This just makes it so that you're not throwing away brushes and stirs and it's just a little bit better for our environment. I use a set of jewelry pliers as well as a ring ring tool to help adding the hardware to our keychain. I like to have something protecting both my surface from when I'm doing the mica powders and also for when I put it under the UV lamp, I use a silicone mat. You're going to need an acrylic blank, any kind that you would like, any shape that you would like. Some jump rings. I got these off Amazon. It's a huge pack. I have had this for years and I still have a ton. A squeegee. Some sandpaper. This is 400 grit and I find this to really work well. You want to sand your blank a little bit. A UV lamp. You'll need some vinyl in whatever color you choose, but let me tell you this holographic is gorgeous. This camera just cannot pick up how pretty this is, and I'm literally obsessed. It's so, so pretty. And you'll need some transfer tape. You don't need a ton of stuff. It's probably stuff you already have if you're a crafter. I also recommend having a little medicine cap or cup to mix your UV resin with your mica powders in. It just makes things a lot easier as far as mixing is concerned. So let's get started. I'm going to show you guys how to put the mica powder into your UV resin because while that cures, you can cut out your decal and we're going to make this really adorable mermaid keychain. So let's get started. So once you've gathered all of your supplies, it's time to choose what colors you're going to use. And we have our reds holographic vinyl from Arteza. These colors are absolutely gorgeous. I love these. I can't wait for you guys to get some of these. They are so pretty. This pink is awesome. They're all really, really fun, and they have a really fun color shift. This one kind of shifts to blue. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really cool. And then there's like this greenish orange blue one, but we're going to use this one. I love this color. It's so pretty, and it's really fun. It shifts from like a really pale pink and a really deep, deep orange. So there's lots of color shift to this one. We're gonna use this and we are going to use an acrylic blank from 143 Vinyl. This is one of their circle blanks. And we have our mica powders, UV resin, a medicine cup, the little measuring spoon that comes with your mica powders. This is super important to have. And we have a stir stick and a brush, both made of silicone. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is use our aqua blue. And I'm going to show you guys how to mix your mica powders. And it's really, 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 really easy. This is something that a lot of people are fairly intimidated by, but I promise you this is pretty simple. The first thing that we're going to do is take some UV resin and put it into our measuring cup. You can get these off of Amazon, super inexpensive. For this size blank, I would typically put about 7.5 
um, uh, milliliters in here. So you can just sort of guesstimate. And as you do these, you'll start to learn how much UV resin it takes to make one. I'm going to just squeeze a bunch of this in here. One thing to keep in mind when working with UV resin, keep it away from any sunlight or UV light. That's super duper important. Get just a little bit more. This is just going to be a little bit over five, actually, because when we add the mica powder, it'll add just a little bit of volume. And you want to keep this away from any open windows, any sort of UV light source, because it will start to cure. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is open this, and you're going to see this has a little seal on it to keep it protected. Go ahead and open that. And I do try to open it just so it's kind of over the resin. That way, if any comes out, it'll just go right into our UV resin. Take your little measuring spoon, and what we're going to do is do about two scoops, and you can always add more. So I have two, like, two heaping scoops, and sometimes it likes to stick to the spoon, so you can just tap it. And we'll just do, like, two heaping scoops. You can always add more mica powder if you need to or would like to. And what we're going to do is take our little stir stick, and I use a silicone stir stick. That way, if for some reason it spills or whatever, it comes right off the stir stick, so it's super easy. So all I'm going to do is just stir this around, and you want to give it a good quality stir. You want to make sure you get that mica powder all into your UV resin. I'm loving this color. This is a gorgeous color. And you guys will see the little bit of a pearly shine to it here in just a second once I've got it all mixed. I'll show you guys up close because it has a really gorgeous pearly shine. So I just like to mix it. I try to mix it and try not to get too many air bubbles in it, but I'll usually let it sit for a minute before I place it on my blank just to be sure that any of those little micro bubbles are gone. And I make sure I scrape the sides. This is just like when you do epoxy. You want to make sure that you're scraping the sides, making sure to really mix that UV resin together with the mica powder. So here's a really up-close look. Let's see if I can get it to focus for you guys. Can you see that pearly shine? Isn't that gorgeous? So excited for this. So again, I'm going to let this sit for just a couple minutes. Let some of those bubbles work their way up to the top of the um, resin. Let those kind of work their way out. And then we can apply it to our blank. When you get an acrylic blank, you're likely going to have some sort of coating over it. It may be blue, it may be brown paper, it may be white, but you need to take this coating off just one side. So all I'm going to do is use my pin pen and I just carefully go to one of the edges and I will just peel back the coating enough that I can grab it with my hand. And again, I just peel off one side of this. Now with this, it's very, very smooth surface. So it's best to sand this just a little bit to help your resin stick. I'm just gonna use a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper. This is a really light sand, but it is going to help your resin stick to your acrylic better. So I just do a really, really light sand all across the top of the acrylic. And then you just wanna make sure that you wipe off any excess dust from your sanding. And now we're ready to apply the UV resin. Applying the UV resin is really, really simple. You just take your medicine cup and pour it over your blank. And I always just pour it right to the center. I don't pour it all out at once. And as it sits here, I want to make sure that I move my resin to the edges. One thing I love about doing this with mica powder is it's super easy to see that you've gotten all the way to the edge of your blank. And this color is absolutely gorgeous. It's super pretty, it's really pearly. So all I'm doing is just pushing some of the resin to the edge. Now don't worry about the fact that you're seeing some bald spots, we will fill those in, but I like to just push it all to the edge best I can first. And then I come in and fill back the center. It's just how I do it. Not everyone does it this way. And you may need to find the way that works best for you and the way you craft. But this is the way I do it. I find this a little bit easier. And that way I, I tend to put too much on. And this really stops me from doing that because then it spills over the edge. And you don't want to get any resin on the other side of your blank. Now that we've gotten to the hole, we're gonna need to be a little more careful here. So what I'll do is take my stir stick and just dip it into some resin back here and then just gently dip it around the hole 
to kind of fill that area in. And you're just going to go around the blank completely. And you may need to go real slow. It's okay though. Just take your time. And you just want to gently move your resin. And I will say sometimes I will put a little piece of like painter's tape on the opposite side of my blank to stop it from moving around on my table because they love to slide around on your table. So if you're having a lot of sliding issues, you can just put a little piece of painter's tape on that other side. So now that it looks like I got everything around the edge, I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of my resin right on to my blank. Again, I'm not going to probably end up using all of it. I made a lot of it, but that's okay because we can always use this on another blank today. Resin will not keep like overnight, but you can absolutely just reuse this in another um, project or you can use like epoxy molds and stuff and put your resin in there and then cure it and just add more resin each time you have some extra resin. Now one thing I love about mica powders is that they have this really cool swirly effect. So what I like to do is go through and just re-swirl them a little bit after I've kind of pushed the mica powder and UV resin around because I really love this swirly look. I just think it's really, really pretty. Once you have done that, I like to let mine sit for just a minute. I like to make sure that I've gotten everything. I'm going to put just another little dab right over here, over top of where the hole is. It was a little thin right there. I like to let this sit for a few minutes just to let any of the bubbles surface up if there are any, which there really typically are not when I do this. Um, I also like to let it sit just to make sure that I've fully covered it and nothing is going to, you know, shift around. And once that has set for a few minutes, we'll put it under the UV light. So I'll show you guys how to do the UV light next. This is my UV light. It is a 36 watt. I would recommend getting something with a higher wattage, 72 or above, but this is just the one that was gifted to me, so I use it. The higher the wattage, the less time it's going to take to cure. So you can see there's a button on the top right here, and you can set this for infinity time, um, 60 seconds or 120 seconds. Because this is a lesser um, light, this takes about five minutes to cure the larger crafts. So I'm gonna let this cure for about five minutes. I'll show you the inside of the light too, because it's super cool. So you have all these little UV bulbs, these ones and these ones. So this is all bulbs and these are bulbs. And you put it right over your blank and then you just turn it on for about five minutes and let that cure. I do have to do this off camera because my UV light cord is super short, but I just got this off Amazon. I'll link a better one in the description down below for you guys. I am going to purchase a better one after um, this video because this just takes a little longer than I would like. Because we're using a blank from 143vinyl.com, they offer the downloaded SVG files for them. So all you'll need to do is head to their website, go under the acrylic keychains, and click here to download SVG files for the acrylic blanks. Now you'll see that there are some listed as LED circles. Those are not the ones that we need. We need to scroll down here to find the circle and we are at the circle 2.5. So go ahead and download that. You can put that anywhere you want, but I have an acrylic blank folder that I find super handy to keep all of my blanks in. Once you've downloaded that, you can go ahead and over to and head over once you've downloaded that, you can head over to Cricut Design Space. Click Upload, then click Upload Image, and click Browse. All you'll need to do now is find where you put that file, which we just put that in our acrylic blanks file, and go ahead and insert that into your design space. Now that you've uploaded it, just click Insert Images, and don't resize it because it is sized to the right size for your acrylic blank. Now you can put anything that you would like to within your circle. You can use a pre-made SVG or design something yourself or find something in Design Space Images. I'm going to go ahead and look in Images and just see if I can find anything that I like that I think would look fun on the acrylic. I think that blue really gives me mermaid vibes. And so I kind of am thinking like maybe a mermaid silhouette would be fun or something mermaid-esque would be really, really cute on there. Keep in mind that you only have so much space, so some of these are a little bit wordy for that kind of a space. She's really, really cute, so maybe she might work. 
Um, I also really, really like these little tails. Those could be cute. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. I might insert those. Um, I like this one is fun. So you can select a bunch of different designs and find whichever one you like best for your design. So you can kind of just go through, click whatever you like, and from there you can add them to your design space canvas. So I've just added a couple images that I liked from the Cricut Design Space Access. And now what I'm gonna do is size them down to fit inside of my circle to see what I like and what I think looks really fun in my circle. And also what I think will cut. Because remember, every material and every machine does have a limit to what it can cut. I do like that one. I think that one's really cute. I'm going to change the color of Mermom just so I can see it better. I don't think this one is going to be great. I don't think I'm going to like it. I think I'm going to have to cut it really small. And I don't really want to have to cut it that tiny to fit. And I feel like it leaves a lot of empty space. So that one is definitely out. I'm going to go ahead and again just change the color so I can see this better. And I sized her down. And then we'll just see if we like that one. That one's kind of fun. I do like that. I almost like just the plain mermaid. So we'll keep her to the side. And then I liked this one with the little bow. But again, I think this one's going to have to be cut so small to fit that I just don't think I'm going to like it because it is not going to show the detail. So it's between the little fins, which are cute. But I think I really like this mermaid. I think she's really fun. So we're going to go ahead and do this mermaid here. What I need to do is just get rid of the circle. Simple as that, you don't need it, it's extra. You absolutely don't have to have it. This is all you need is your mermaid. We're gonna cut this with the Arteza holographic vinyl and I do find for this that the light cardstock setting works best for my machine. But I always recommend doing test cuts anytime that you're trying a new material. That way you know what your machine is going to cut because I have friends who have this and they cut on a different setting than I do. So every machine is going to be a little bit different, but light cardstock might be a great place for you guys to start with your cut settings. So I'm going to hit make it. I'm going to take it over to the machine. I'll show you guys it cutting and weeding and then we can apply it to our blank. We're going to use this gorgeous Arteza funky orange. I love this color. I think it's going to be really fun for the mermaid against that really cool turquoisey aqua blue. So just make sure you get this on your mat nice and secure and go ahead and load your mat. I'll let you guys watch this cut. For this, we are actually gonna put this on the opposite side of where we put our mica powder. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just gonna take off the white coating here and I love this part because you can see the opposite side of the mica powder and look how gorgeous I don't know how well you guys can see that but the color is stunning and I love the little swirls on this side and I just love the swirls on this side I just think it's so pretty so make sure you put this on the opposite side you can put it on the same side as your UV resin but for me I like to put it on the opposite side of it all we're gonna need is a little bit of transfer tape and a squeegee. This is the medium tech from 143 Vinyl and this squeegee is from them as well. And all we're gonna do is just run our squeegee really quickly across our mermaid just to burnish it to the transfer tape. And then what you're gonna do is go ahead and peel her off the backing. Simple as that. This is a really easy project and I hope you guys really try this out because it's so fun. Now you don't have to put her straight, you can put her any direction that you would like to. I think I'm gonna put her at a little bit of an angle and I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish her down. And you wanna do this pretty carefully. You wanna make sure especially to get her arms because they're pretty thin. And you wanna make sure that you get all over her so that you make sure she sticks down really, really well. This orange color against this blue is absolutely gorgeous. And then all you're gonna do is just gently peel off your transfer tape and you have a beautiful holographic mermaid on a mica powdered acrylic. Now you can absolutely add a layer of UV resin to this side if you would like to. 
I personally don't like to do that and I don't like to do it on the holographics because I find that it does dull their shine just a little bit and this one is so gorgeous that I don't want to mess with any of that but the mica powder on the other side is absolutely stunning. Do you see that beautiful color and all those swirls? I absolutely love it and this is going to be a really unique gift. And now your keychain is all finished. This was such a fun project to do with mica powder and I really really enjoyed it. Thank you to Arteza for providing my mica powder and my vinyl. And because they're so awesome, they are partnering with me to do a giveaway. So if you guys are interested in getting your own set of mica powder and some of the red style holographic vinyl, make sure you follow the rules posted down below. You need to subscribe to both my channel and Arteza's channel. Comment on the Arteza video linked down below and like that video. Then like and comment my video to let me know that you have done everything that we have asked you to do for this giveaway. This giveaway is open to the United States and the UK and Europe. I listed links for everything that we used in this video as well so that you can purchase and make your own. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and Arteza's channel. I'm on that path to 100,000 subscribers and I am so close and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family. I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy crafting.